of the training lead code solution. If you want the best mock interviewing in North America, feel free to North America, North America, feel free to check us out at bowsertraining.org. We're here to get you, help you land your next dream offer. Okay, today we're going to talk about a uh, follow-up problem, major element. So we talked about the major element one. Now this is a major element two. What's the difference? The difference is, is in major element one, you just need to find the dominant element, which is appears more than half of the time, n divided by two. So now you want n divided by three times. So how should we do it? If you just look at this problem, of course you can use a hash map, but it, it is sick, explicitly ask you to do it in O1 O n time and O one space. That means you cannot use a hash map. How do you do it? Um, so the hint, if you click hint, it will basically tell you that think about major element one, which is the dominant voting algorithm. So now you think about it, it is, first of all, you know, at least, I mean, given this array, right, it ha it should have at most the two elements that, that, that can satisfy this requirement can be the dominant major element because you cannot simply have three because if all, all three are more than uh, n divided by three times, that means the sum will be larger than n. That's not possible. That's highlighted here. So therefore, we can actually perform the voting algorithm and then we can have two candidates. And then within the two candidates, we can do another linear scan just to screen out the false positives, false positive ones. Why do we need to do that? Because you will have cases like one to one and uh, um, the voting algorithm will vote one and the two. They are both the potential dominant elements, while actually the actual answer is only one. Two should be excluded. Uh, of course, you, uh, feel free to look at the, the major element. It has also has the video explanation you can see. But uh, this problem can also be uh, um, extended to like a K. So I have the link here. So this, our friend, uh, Stefan, um, the guy who basically write one line code to solve the problem, uh, another problem, not this one. So it's a very good follow-up question, right? How, how about if it is a K, major K element? So it's the same thing, right? So you, you instead of here, you have two, one candidate, two candidates, you have like a array of candidates. However, in each of the iteration, so you will have go through the K array. So that pretty much give you O N K time complexity. And also the time, the space will be okay. Okay, let's get back to how we actually implement this. Just like the major element, you will have uh, one candidate, one vote, another candidate, another vote. When you go through the array, so essentially you will be like, the implementation is a little bit tricky. So the way it was doing here is, it doesn't matter what is the initial value of the candidate, because let's say if your array has this value, it will equal and then it will, it will increase the vote. If your array doesn't have the, the candidate one, the candidate two initial value, it will basically jump into here. Just note it in Java, right? If else, if once it goes into a branch, it will never jump to another branch. So it uh, has to be mutually exclusive. So if it jumps to this branch, so you assign the value, and then you increase the vote. Um, note here, the order is actually matters. So if you want to put a vote here and then you're doing the rest of the things, you have to add some extra check because you have cases like, for example, eight, eight, seven, seven, seven. So you have, once you have two eight, first of all, your first element is zero, you will assign the eight. And then if you don't have those extra checks, your vote two is also zero. So your eight will be assigned here as well. So essentially you will be miscounting. Right, so that's why the order here is first of all, you check if your number equals to your existing candidate. If so, increase or else, then you check the vote. Uh, if if you don't, if you think it's a little bit confusing, just code it in a way that move all this uh, vote up before the candidate, and then you will see why it has to be coded this way. And then later, you do a, a for loop, you count the elements, and then it has to be larger than three. Uh, that's it. So, O n times complex complexity because you we iterate through the array ones and O1 stay a space complexity. Um, it's not honestly a very interesting question, um, but anyways, there you go. If you, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments below. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.